but I got the opportunity to interview three of the Gold Coast Titans Rugby League players. We have Kevin Proctor, Ryan James, the captain, and Michael Gordon on the Super Dad show tonight. I hope you enjoy the show. So we are joined on the Super Dad show with five deep diving questions with Kevin Proctor. And Kevin, first question for you today, when you're not traveling to and from footy games, what is your home life like? Do you have a partner, kids, hobbies away from the footy field? Give us a bit of a snapshot into your day-to-day -day life away from the football field. Um, oh, I'm not nothing special, man. I, uh, I've got a partner and two kids, two little girls. Um, How old are they? Uh, four and two. So they, they keep me pretty busy, man, just entertaining them on my day yep. off. Um, just spending time with them and because um, footy takes up most of your life and mm. um, and when, when I do get those days off I'll, I'll try and spend it with them and absolutely um, yeah take them to the park playground whatever just film some time in and are you one of these super dads that go down the slide with them can yeah, you man. fit mate can you fit <laughs> uh, some some slides are fit some are not <laughs> but no nah, it's always good fun man yeah great and tell us about your partner as well uh, yeah Lisa she um we went to school together in, in uh, Gold Coast. Yep. Uh, at PBC, you know, Palm Beach, Columbia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we went to school together there. We weren't together at school, but um, kind of linked up after, a couple of years after school. And uh, the rest is history, man. She's been uh, yeah. down in Melbourne with me for <coughs> four years. <coughs> yep. So, um, and yeah, she moved back up to the Gold Coast with me. And uh, we had two kids together. And, um, her mum's from the Gold Coast, my, my parents are on the Gold Coast as well, so you know, it all kind of just made sense and yeah. um, all worked out pretty good. And so if you hadn't become a professional footballer, what would you be doing now, do you think? Um, geez, I honestly don't know. It would, it would probably be some trade or... Because um, I, I was straight out of school yep. down to, to Melbourne, so right. I've never really actually worked. But... Um, yeah, I've got, <coughs> got a small business course under my belt and okay. um, I'm hopefully doing um, this event management course soon too, event and sports management course, hmm. hopefully starting up in the next couple of weeks. So, yep. um, yeah, to be honest, I, I wouldn't have a clue what I'd be So doing. the Titans are supportive of life after football and helping <laughs> you to have the time to take other courses? Yeah, I think... Um, <laughs> I call I, you soon, man. I think... Um, the whole of the NRL are, are pretty supportive of doing, Beautiful. doing stuff um, after Great. footy and yeah. So what are two <laughs> memorable life highlights for you? One from your sporting career and run one from your personal life. Um, my sporting career, probably the 2012 grand final. Um, yeah. Yeah, got to win my first grand final and um, that was awesome man. That's, that's what every footy player wants to do and that's the uh, the pinnacle of our game and um, yeah. I got to do it at such a young age as well so I was very very grateful by yeah. um, being able to do that and awesome. uh, my, my greatest achievement outside of footy is um, probably my kids like, uh, especially my first one mm. I, I could barely look after myself um, let alone look after a kid yeah. when I first had her but um, she, she's been the best thing that ever happened to me you know and, awesome. and I've got uh, I've got another one too, so that's times two. Yeah. Mm. How does your parenting differ from the way you were brought up? Oh, jeez, I'd come from a little country town in New Zealand, so mm. um, they've got a lot more opportunity here. And, and mm. um, I suppose living on the sunny Gold Coast, got all the beaches and got everything at your feet, you know. Like, yeah. Um, I, I was just at a little little country town, like I said. All there was farms and. Um, mm. And yeah, schools there, there wasn't too much, just rugby and, and uh, the meatworks, but <laughs> um, yeah. Mm. And what's it like suffering losses personally and as a team? I know you guys are having a bit of a struggle street season. Yeah. Um, you know, what goes through your head and in the change rooms as a team after a loss? Yeah, it's not a nice feeling. It's. Um you, you obviously want to win every game and uh, losses come, that, that's footy, you know, but um, and we're, we're in a bit of a slump at the moment mm. and, and trying to trying to get ourselves out, but the only way to really do that is 
to work hard at training and um, prepare as well as you can um, for the game and, and try not to get sidetracked and, and get sloppy with your preparation and um, yeah like trying to just get your job done and um, everyone else hopefully everyone else gets their job done too so it's 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 a pretty hard one it's not a good mm. feeling but um, yeah the only way to get out of it is, is to try and work your way out of it and it comes from hard work and uh, dedication absolutely and look <coughs> what advice would you give to the parents of kids who want to follow in your footsteps and be a professional rugby league player uh, what the, the parents they want to yeah just have kids. that's right so um, let's talk parents and kids in in hindsight knowing what you know now about this as a career what would you tell the parents what would you tell the kids that want to embark on this just stick to it like you, you can do anything if you put your mind to it and, um, nothing really comes easy you have to work hard for it and um, your, your dedication your hard work over the years if you be persistent at it um, you'll get where you want to go to and mm. depends on how how bad you want it you know and, mm. and the parents that uh, the parents just be supportive and um, I suppose don't, don't push them to that direction if they, they don't want to do it and especially if you're a uh, player yourself you know like mm. I won't be pushing anything on my kids yep. if they want to do it and take that path yeah. then that's that's their own choice you know but yeah. I'll be supportive if they do want to do it but if they don't want to do it then mm you got to um, respect the decision as well. Mm. And look, there's obviously a lot of pressure on professional sports people to be good role models, to manage their social media presence. Um, you know, there's a lot of people looking up to you. How do you deal with that pressure? What are your stress management strategies? What's, what's going on for you as a dad and obviously a player which is extremely busy training and traveling yeah. and you know, managing a family life at the same time. It's, um, you got to kind of break things up as well because this is my 11th season and mm. you can't just be footy, footy, footy all the time. You have yep. to have hobbies outside of footy. And, yep. uh, I've got my family, that's good too, but like I play, I like playing golf with my mates. I like playing yeah, nice. uh, golf. I've got poker during the weeks with my yep. mates as well. Yep. Like, you've got to have that mental escape from footy all the time because mm. It's so like demanding on your body and yeah. and on your mind, like yeah. with all the pressures and that. Mm. So it's good to clear your mind with hobbies and friends and and family and um, mm. uh, it's that, that's what keeps keeps my head clear anyway. Awesome. Uh, everyone has their different, I suppose, methods, but um, mm. yeah, you can't just be footy, footy, footy all the time because you you Absolutely. just be overloaded and. Yeah. You just get drained and you just lose that passion for it, yep. you know, but yep. um, you've got to find that good balance. Mm. We've got an amazing network of super dads yeah. and you're talking to the founder here today and it's a, an education and support network for dads. Yeah. Is there a message or, or something you'd <laughs> like to share with our listeners today? No, uh, just be supportive of your kids. Um, like you can do anything you want and and just try and push them in the right direction, be, be a good role model and um, yeah, let, let them kind of figure it out for themselves and um, just yeah, let them be happy, you know, like enjoy themselves and um, don't put too much pressure on your kids, just um, let them enjoy life. Beautiful. Your kids. Beautiful. Thank you very much for joining us Cheers, on the Super Dad Show today. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. And we are joined by Ryan James, who is the captain of the Gold Coast Titans. Thank you for joining us on the Super Dad Show today. That's all right. Thanks for us. No worries. Now, uh, first question today. When you're not travelling to and from games, what is home life like for you? Do you have a partner, kids, hobbies away from the footy field? Give us a bit of a snapshot into, into life for you. Yeah, got a wife, been with her for the last 12 and a half years. Got a two-year-old, two and a, oh, two and a half, and nice. probably a 10-week-old. So when I get home, it's mostly looking after uh, the youngest one while the, the little bit older one runs around and while yeah. the missus tries to get dinner and stuff ready. So it's pretty full on when I get home at the moment. Yeah, yeah. And how do you actually handle being away from your family? How do you keep in touch with them during that time? Yeah, we always FaceTime, like always at night, trying to get them to go to bed, just, yeah, just trying to keep their yeah, face contact. But when we have long trips, it's always a little bit harder to be away, yeah. uh, especially with the newborn probably being there 10 weeks old. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, the two and a half year old sort of 
gets what I do, he sort of realises that I have to go away every now and then. So yeah. um, he's getting to that stage where you know, he sort of doesn't want you to go and just cries when you leave. So yeah. it's pretty hard leaving home, but um, you know, we do what we do to put you know, a roof over our family's head and you know, keep, keep food on the plane. Yeah, absolutely. And look, if you hadn't become a professional footballer, what would you be doing now? You know, has this changed for you in terms of what you can now see yourself doing after retirement? Um, yeah, I didn't really know. I'd, I've done my Bachelor of Business in okay. Sports Management, so I was always going to uni and I did that degree and I'm doing my you know, Masters in Education at the moment, so hopefully yeah. some sort of school teaching or something, but I'd just like to stay in the footy arena and hopefully be at the Titans. I've been there for 11 years now and I um, don't see myself going anywhere, so hopefully, yeah, just stick around there. Yeah, beautiful. And what are two of your most memorable life highlights? So maybe one from your sporting career and one from your personal life. Uh, yeah, sporting career would just be yeah, my debut um, back in 2010. We were Manly, so it was a long time ago now. But um, yeah, it's always a memorable thing. You know, running out, having your first game of NRL, and mm. yeah, for probably lifeline was probably the birth of my first son. So yeah, Carter, um, yeah, born. October two years ago so yeah they're just great moments. Awesome, awesome. And what's it like suffering losses personally and as a team? Uh, you know what goes through your head and in the change rooms after it? Yeah it's hard because um, you know, being the captain you have to sort of take in what everyone's saying and then also have to face media and you have to do the, the talk afterwards so mm. uh, they're just all different things and there yeah, you sort of have to just sort of be strong and be there for everyone and mm. just have to make sure if it's a loss we have to make sure we have to do what we did wrong and make work on that and do do better next week and all you have to do is be able to build and mm. now off the field it's always hard you just have to make sure you've got a good support system and talk to the people you trust other than that um yeah i've got a good support system my family's great they live in live where i live and yeah. i've been pretty fortunate where i've grown up and the family i got so my parents are still together and um yeah got a loving family so it's just great to have them around awesome awesome and look what advice would you give to the parents of kids who want to follow in your step, footsteps, but also the kids. Yeah, just always give 100%. It doesn't matter if you're not the best as a kid or growing up, but just make sure you always stick at it. Um, yeah, just if you want something, just go out there and grab it and just make sure as a parent you're always there to support them. My parents, uh, dad worked a full-time job, so mum could take me and my brothers around to football training and do everything, so mm. um, I owe a lot to my parents. And um, yeah, they're the, some of the best memories I have. A dad working hard so he can provide for us and I get to live the life I do now. Excellent. Brian James, captain of the Titans, thank you very much for joining us on the Super Dad Show today. Cheers, thanks, mate. Good idea. All good. We are joined by Michael Gordon. Mate, thank you very much for uh, allowing me to put you on the spot after getting a massage tonight. <laughs> I'm very relaxed state at the moment, so it's all good. <laughs> and uh, first of all, how are you feeling about the game tomorrow night? Um, yeah, pretty pumped. It's a um, yeah, great place to play and we're playing a great team, so it's um, yeah, it's pretty exciting. So Suncorp's got a pretty awesome atmosphere? Yeah, it's always good. Um, yeah, we're, It's a double header, so there'll be, there'll be a massive crowd there and it's always a great atmosphere, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, beautiful. And look, most important thing I want to sort of draw out with these couple of questions today is what life is like for a professional sports person away from the footy field. So, yeah, look, when you're not travelling to and from games, what is home life like for you? You know, do you have a partner, kids, hobbies away from the footy field? What keeps you busy? Give us a bit of a snapshot. Yeah, i um, married with uh, two children. Oh, yeah? Um, I live down in Casuarina, so not far from the beach. And, nice. Uh, yeah, basically I, um, I'm usually gone in the morning for training before they go to school, um, but I usually pick them both up. Well, one's in primary school, the other's in daycare. And, um, yeah, I usually do the pick-up, and on, on the day off I like to do the drop-off and the pick-up, so... Um, yeah, life revolves around the kids pretty much. Yeah, good on you, man. Yeah, we all know what that's like as dads. And look, if you hadn't become a professional footballer, what would you be doing now? And has this changed for you in terms of what you can picture yourself doing now in retirement? <laughs> um, well, I, I used to work a few jobs before football. Um, yep. I was a landscaper for one, and um, I was a pizza boy at night as well, so I, I um, mixed it up a bit. but. I think um, I was getting into the, the horticulture and landscaping side of things, mm, so mm. I'd say I'd probably still be in, in that avenue now. But um, yeah, obviously got into professional rugby league, and um, yeah, when I'm finished, I'm I've, I've got a few avenues that I'm exploring, so I suppose uh, time will tell. Yeah, and just give our listeners a 
quick understanding of what was involved for you to actually get your break as a, uh, you know, as a footy player? How did it all happen um, for you? Yeah, it was not the, the classic story. I never, you know, I didn't play um, any junior reps or yeah. I didn't go to a club and play Jersey Flag and SG Ball and all that stuff. I mm. was um, living on the on the Tweed Coast and playing for, for Tweed Ed Seagulls in the Queensland Cup and, um, yeah, they, they used to play one game a week on ABC TV and mm. I um, was, was playing a good game and um, got approached by um, Penrith Panthers at the time to go down and uh, possibly um, yeah sign for two years down there. So that was I was um, I was 20 at the time. So it wasn't yeah I wasn't certainly recruited as a teenager or anything like. That, so mm. I had probably a longer pathway to the NRL than most players do these days. Yep, yep, very cool. And what are two memorable life highlights to date? So one from your sporting career and one from your personal life. Um, sporting career, I suppose um, every every game I get to play NRL is a um, you know a privilege. But I suppose when you make your debut, it's probably probably pretty special. It happened a long time ago now, but um, yeah, it's probably pretty pretty great moment. And um, off the field, um, yeah, obviously the, the day both my kids are born, yeah, you know, they're both yeah memorable days. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Pretty hard to forget that sort of thing. So <laughs> isn't that isn't that? So look, you guys are having a bit of a mixed season. Um, the Titans. What's it like suffering losses personally for you, but also as a team? So, what goes through your head, and also in the change rooms as a team after it? Oh, well, obviously, yeah, disappointment. Um, you always want to go out there to win, and everyone goes out there to do their best, and sometimes it doesn't work. And yeah, you know, I think it's probably been more frustrating the last few weeks than anything. But um, you know, I'm, I yeah, you know, I pride myself on the way I play, and I don't like losing, but. I, um, I try and get over it pretty quickly because you know you, if you carry on too much and dwell on it too much then it, then it flows into your home life and then obviously the next week training and all that stuff so um, just try and yeah you obviously take your lessons out of it and then move on yeah absolutely and when you are away from home what's the easiest way to keep in touch you said you've got a, a seven-year-old and a four-year-old is yeah, that right that's right yeah so um yeah they're they're quite advanced at facetime and all that sort of stuff so yeah um, a lot of the time they don't even like looking at me face so we'll just talk normally <laughs> on the phone so yeah, um, yeah technology is amazing these mm. days so it's easy to stay in touch so look while I was massaging one of the other fellas tonight um, uh, one of the guys got a phone call from his family he was FaceTiming with his daughter and she didn't want to talk to him she wanted to talk to one of the other young players at the <laughs> table yeah that sounds about right it sounds like um, you guys are you know you're quite close you're quite a close-knit crew obviously as a, as a team and uh you know about each other's family life a little bit and yeah and that's yeah it's important to have that connection off the field as well you know we, we spend a lot of time together at training so mm. um it's good to, to get into people's personal lives and get to know their families and friends and, and all that stuff as well so yeah absolutely so we've talked about how you sort of got your break what advice would you have for um you know the parents of kids who are interested in you know following in your footsteps but also the kids um yeah it's a tough one i think the main the main thing is um you've got to obviously um enjoy what you do um and the main thing yeah it's 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 about obviously it's a serious business and it's serious trying to get into it but if you're not enjoying it then mm. that's that's the main thing you don't want to put pressure on yourself when it's unnecessary and um yeah football's not the end of the world so or professional sports not the end of the world um yeah there's plenty other things in life that you know can make you happy and you can live a rich and fulfilling life and um, yeah sports not the be all and end all absolutely absolutely and look our group uh we have a lot of dads that are reaching out for a lot of support in their time of need they've been through the separations and the divorces and and uh you know just just struggling to juggle it all as a dad you know is there any message you've got for those guys Oh, it's, yeah, it's a tough one. Um, obviously, you know the the kids are the main priority, so it's um, you want to you want to do whatever's best for the kids, but at the same time, you, you know you want to be there as a dad. So all I can say is, yeah, hang in there and do what's best for for everyone involved. Beautiful, Michael. Thanks yeah. very much for joining thanks, us mate. tonight. Cheers, mate. Thank Good you. Good on you.